Hi, and welcome back to another episode of Red Dot Forum Camera Talk. As always, I am your host, David Farkas, joined by my co-host, Josh Lair. Hey, everybody. We got Jose Rivera producing the show in the little box over there. <laughs> Hello, guys. All right. Uh, welcome back. It's been uh, a couple weeks. I've lost count. I don't know. Yes. It's, been, it's been some. It's been a measure of time. Yes. Uh, since our last episode. Yes. And we are back. Yes. There has been a new product announcement in the interim time since mm -hmm. our last episode. Mm -hmm. And what are we talking about today? Ah, today is all about the new 100 to 400 millimeter SL, CL, TL, L mount lens that Leica introduced, along with a companion 1.4x teleconverter over there. This is the longest range zoom that Leica has introduced for the SL system at a 4X, and also the longest focal length currently available, I think, in all across all Leica lenses, I would say. Well, not counting previous R lenses. I mean, currently, right. all, across all current yeah. production right. Leica lenses, the yes. 100 to 400. Uh, this is a focal length we have lacked in the SL it line has, for, has. for the entirety of its existence. Well, we should, we should mention, this yep. is the... You didn't bring the tripod foot for this? You lost it in Iceland, nope. I think. It's in my back. Oh, perfect. I might, I might sneak out when you're talking. <laughs> you don't need when it. Josh is doing. Okay. Oh, if you, well, yeah. no, this one fits on. That's fine. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Uh, so this is the 90 to 280 Apo Vario Elmerit SL. It's oh, the tripod color is backwards. There we go. Oh, I think that's anti-rotation yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, technique. Anti-rotation. Yeah. <laughs> so this is, this has been the kind of the the telephoto standard bearer yes. in the SL lineup. Yes. Since. When did this come out? In 2016? 16? Yeah. yeah. This was one of the, I think the, the second or third lens to come out. Yeah. The, the sort of trio of the 24 to 90, mm -hmm. the 51 4, the 90 to 280 yeah. held us along for a significant amount of time. And, um, and it's a fantastic lens. Well, David, you wrote the review. I did write a lens, review yes. of this. Yeah. So I have a review of this lens on Red Dot Forum, and you can see some sample photos of uh, butterflies and other, other yeah. close up things. So the, I have used this lens as part of my Holy Trinity landscape kit since that time. I, you know, I SL2, mm -hmm. 1635, 24 to 90, mm -hmm. 90 to 280. Mm -hmm. But there are times when it would be nice to be, have a little more reach. I think it's gonna roll. Yep. <laughs> and, <laughs> like that. and, you know, we have repeatedly asked the uh, people in the like optics department. Yes. What about a teleconverter? <laughs> and yeah. uh, their answers have been have ranged from either um, dismissive to cheeky and everywhere in between. Yeah. We'll spare you the details on that. Yeah. Bottom line, we now have an option. The 100 to 400 mm -hmm. is that option. And it's a bit lighter to boot, right? Yeah, it's about 12 ounces lighter than the 90 to 80. Mm -hmm. And it has, of course, more reach. It's an F5 to 6.3, so the aperture is not quite as open as the 90-280. That keeps it small and light relative to its focal length, as well as allows for 82 millimeter filters, which is the standard sort of SL size for the zooms. Right, and, and if I take that off, and I think Jose has a has a close up here, we could just sh talk about the lens physically first. I don't know if I'm actually focused, but we're gonna, we're gonna hope for the best. You look pretty good. Yeah. Looks pretty good? Yeah. Okay. And, uh, yeah, 82 millimeter front diameter. So the same as all of the other zoom lenses. Mm -hmm. We've that's 1635, the 24 to 90, the 24 to 70, mm -hmm. and the 90 to 280, and also the 100 to 400, as well as the 51.4. Yes. Uh, so it's uh, it's pretty compact, it's pretty lightweight, and it's got a new tripod foot design that's lower profile than that found on the. Here, I'm pointing, you can't see, but that's <laughs> that's the 90 to 280 right underneath it. Yeah. And uh, it does release. This little doohickey here. Pull forward. Eh. Nope. More. I gotta want it, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, you gotta really want it. You it's a little thumb screw there and it comes off. There you go. Uh just in case you do forget it, there's still a little mounting uh quarter twenty thread there. So uh but yeah. th this is pretty nice to have that quick release functionality. And it is very, very low profile, so it doesn't jam in your hand the way the uh And it's the most important part, which is Arca. It is, yeah. it is, right. So the the other thing is this plate is now, if you can see from the side, it's Arca Swiss compatible. So we can put it right into a really right stuff plate. I can put it into this Leo photo tripod I have here that we're gonna use for testing. Mm -hmm. um, the unmentionable Colorado tripod heads mm -hmm. take it as well. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a, it's pretty compact. The, another thing to 
that's that's the lens cap. Another thing <laughs> to, to take a look when we when we kind of compare the two. There we go. I'm just gonna put these side by side. There we go. And, and you can see here that the 9280 is definitely taller. Uh, the reason for that is the 100 to 400 is an extending design. The 90 to 280 is all internal zooming. So as we as we zoom this in or out, the length stays uniform throughout the whole range because all of that uh, glass is moving inside the tube. The 100 to 400 takes a different approach, making it more compact because now it's only 100 millimeters. It doesn't have to accommodate up to 280. So that way uh, we've got more compact dimensions. Other differences, right? We've got... Well, it's light. I said it's lighter. It definitely feels a lot lighter than the specs. The specs difference about 12 ounces, but it really feels significantly lighter. For sure. I think also the fact that it's a bit shorter helps. Maybe yeah. it's just the weight distribution. But it doesn't feel as... as No, it doesn't have the same heft. density. But the, yeah. the design philosophy is identical, as you can see. For sure. From the metal construction, the rubberized... Um, focus and zoom rings, mm -hmm. the feel of the knob, you know, the, for um, rotating the tripod collar, mm -hmm. the Aquadura coating, which is a hydrophobic coating on the front uh, and rear elements, mm -hmm. the weather and dust sealing, all of that is consistent between these two lenses. So mm -hmm. these two lenses, despite being different, both in terms of focal length and price point and country of manufacture, if you didn't know any of that and I just handed them to you, yeah. you would instantly realize that they're in the same family of lenses. There is a notable exception when it comes to the mechanics of these because, again, because of this design and this telescoping feature, the zoom and the focus rings mm -hmm. are reversed, mm -hmm. right? So on the 90 to 280, the zoom ring is the rear closest to the camera ring and the focus ring is forward. On the 100-400, Jose, can you tip that down just a hair? There we go. Nice. Ah, good it. job. Okay, perfect. Let me just scoot these back. Okay. Oh, we don't want to talk about that. That's cool. <laughs> Get that out of the way there. It's in the way. Okay. Perfect. There we go. So what we have again is the zoom uh, is is the forward position here on the 100 to 400, and the focus is rear. Now most of the time we're going to be using autofocus. You don't really have to worry about that. And I think because this is a longer design, in terms of when it telescopes out. It's nice to have your your hand a bit more forward on the zoom ring rather than all the way back. You wouldn't really have a good handle on it. Um, the, I keep, dro I right keep dropping the lens. Now, I'm going to mention off. something that's going to drive everybody crazy, which is the Arcus was compatible tripod foot on the 100 or 400 is a perfect fit on the 90 to 280. Mm. The 90-280's tripod foot, which Doesn't we don't fit. have, it's not Arca compatible. It's useless um, <laughs> for better or for worse. I'll have to show mine. Now um, I really have to show mine. And you can... And I did this all day today. You could just slide the foot on, but that foot from the 100 to 400 is not going to be sold separately, as far as I know. Not as a part, not as a product. So the the only way to get one is to buy the lens. So if you have a 90 to 280 and you really, really, really want a nice Arca Swiss compatible, just buy a lens. Just buy the lens and throw the lens away and keep the tripod foot. Just some some consumer advice. Now, and these are compatible as well, right? The, yes, the lens shades are compatible as well because the 90 to 80, like the 24 to 90 and 1635 has a plastic lens shade, and the 100 to 400 has a metal lens shade. This is also found in the 24 to 70. It seems to be a theme with the non-German made <laughs> SL lenses, because all of them, the, yeah. the, the new Summicrons For sure. and the two zooms that are made outside of Germany are both, or all four, have metal lens shades, mm -hmm. whereas all the other ones have plastic lens shades. But what I love is all the shades are cross-compatible. So like David right. just showed, you could put the 100 to 400 shade on the 90 to 280. Again, not available for separate sale. I learned my lesson because when the 24 to 70 came out, we did a show on it and we found out that the hood fits on the 24 to 90. And everybody, everybody was asking yeah. for one. And I was like, maybe, maybe. But now I've learned that they're not going to make that. And the uh, same here. Sale, yeah, so. going to the Simicrons yeah. there. Alas. Too. Alas. So, um, you alas. just have to consider them as really, really, really expensive hoods by just buying the lens. Um, I don't think that's. I don't <laughs> so think that's. You don't think it's good consumer advice? Well, not really. Fine. No. Fine then. Um, Consult your financial advisor and, you know. <laughs> so now, to answer everybody's question, uh, which I'm sure has been in the chat, is how does the 100 to 400 compare to the 90 to 80? Well, it's not as good. <laughs> Sorry to tell you. Uh, at 20... Well, hold on. Let, well, there's a caveat. It's better at 400. <laughs> that is better, true. It's better after at, 200. At equivalent focal yeah. lengths, 
The 9280 still comes out on top. So if you own one, don't feel like it's for the dustbin now. Yep. The performance of the 9280 is mind boggling. It has been that way since the lens came out. We've talked about this to death. David mm -hmm. and I both love the 9280 and wide open, it's sharper than most lenses are. Yeah, stop top down. down. It's yeah, sure. just that good. 100 to 400 is pretty darn good. It is, surprisingly. And it's a little bit easier to make a lens like that good because it's not an F2.8. Exactly. It's a 5.0263, a whereas 9280, 2.8 to 4. And to address those concerns, I and I think these concerns are less valid in the age of digital cameras, yeah. like an SL2S that has clean 25,000 ISO. Mm. These are These issues were much more prevalent on early days of digital and on film where you were maxing out at 400, 800, 1,000 ISO, and maximum aperture was really, really critical. Yeah. Now, yeah. it's not as critical because who cares if it's 5.6 versus F4 versus 2.8? That's true. But I will say, to interrupt you, mm -hmm. um, from a bokeh and a rendering experience, uh, and I'll sure. show this later, the 9280 is also mm. quite a bit superior. It really, really is something, and especially at the wider end. Yeah. At the 90, 90 end, to 8. Yeah. yeah the 100 right. at F5 has very little specialness to it relative right. to the 90 at 2.8. There's a big difference well, that's, there. That's two stops. That's, yeah. That's there's a big, big, big difference yeah. there. And I'll show that. I'll show that later. Interesting. Um, now, this is a really new lens. So David and I have not had as much time with it as we would have liked. But since we only have so much time for shows, we wanted to do this now while it was, uh, while it was new. Um, I did get the chance to shoot around with it on last Sunday, mm -hmm. which was my first outing. We just got the lens on Friday. Uh, my first outing with it, I took it to, of course, a car show, like anywhere else. Shocking. Unfortunately, that show wasn't really conducive for a super long lens because it was a really small venue. But I got, I have a couple of shots that I liked, which mm -hmm. I'll, which I'll show later. Um, just some of my my keepers from that event. And I would say, um, my experience with the lens, having coming from the 90 to 80, which I've used extensively, has been very positive. Good. Number one, the weight or lack thereof is nice relative to that reach. To have that much reach available to me without the weight that I'm used to, because I'm I've carried the 9280 around everywhere, is very very nice. It took me about an hour to get used to the the switch of the rings. Yeah, I was wondering um, about that because I was playing just you yeah. know when Josh brought the lens <laughs> yeah. here to the studio, yeah. I haven't had a lot of hands on time with it, and um, it's like oh 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 it's okay. It, it takes some adjusting. It's sort of like you know if we're from America and then we go to the UK and it's a right hand drive car. Yeah, <laughs> it's like yeah, yeah, your yeah. brain. Yeah. It just has to recompute, like, okay, all these things are backwards now. But we saw a similar thing in terms of the 2490 and the 2470, mm -hmm. uh, like the zoom direction. For right. Instance. Well, those lenses, the, the zoom ring and the focus ring are in the same spot. I'm talking about, for me, it's just flipped, getting used completely. to the, the reaching a little bit further out for mm -hmm. the zoom ring. But after about an hour of shooting um, on an SL2S, I got used to it. And Perfect. It, just, yeah, it yeah. was fine. So uh, what I did do... Because I shoot, and you and I both, I can do this shoot in manual focus mode mm -hmm. and use the joystick uh, for focus. Back button. Back I button. did uh, disable the focus assist because I would find sometimes, especially in the beginning, I was turning the focus ring by mistake. Oh, you, oh, and I'd get a magnified, right, right, I'd right. look at the camera up, but I'd already have a magnified view. So this is a top tip if you're still learning this lens is just turn off the manual focus assist, at least until you get a feel for it. So you're not accidentally bringing the camera up with a zoomed in that makes sense. assist view. So just sense. a small thing I learned. Sense. Yeah. yeah. Um, Focus performance, I would say, is better than the 9280. Really? Faster, yes. Because this is pretty fast. With I felt it was faster. I haven't been able to do the measure testing that I want to do yeah. yet, but we've obviously got tons of more shows coming, so we'll do I mean, more than that. So the, the numbers that we have on the 90 to 280, yeah. this is a dual synchro drive system, yeah. and it's uh, close focus to infinity in, I think, 20 milliseconds. Well, they don't publish the numbers on the 100 to 400, right. but what I can speak from is my sort of experience with it. Now, I wasn't shooting stuff that was changing. You know, these were mostly static cars or cars kind of set rolling side to side. Yeah. I just felt the focus was a little bit snappier. Okay. Um, maybe because there's less weight for the motors to work sure. through. And the experience has been the same with the SL Summicrons. Yeah. If you guys watched that show, you saw that I was able to do some measure testing with the lenses compared to the Apples and the, the non-Apple Summicrons were faster. And I felt very similarly experienced here. Uh, that's just Sense. more of a gut feeling. I haven't done the, the testing yet. Um, but I, I'm looking forward to taking this like to the racetrack and shooting some action with it because I sure. think could that combine with the tracking of the SL2 sure. and the S2S? What do you think about video? Video applications? Jose, what do you think? Jose? Um, I mean, I haven't tested it yet. Right? I know, but I'm saying yeah. conceptually. That's how new this lens is. There's nobody, <laughs> I'm the only one that's yeah. used it. What, what would you <laughs> use this for video for? I mean... No pressure. No pressure. Wait, are we wearing the same shirt? Oh, my gosh. Similar. Mine has oh, yellow. Wow. Ah, okay. Wow. 
For video, I mean, I don't know. I would have to see what, what I could do with it. I mean, I know that at, at 100, you could do a lot with it. Yeah. But at 400, you're going to have to try it out. Tripod and yeah, you get up like. You're going to have to try it out. Yeah, it's going to Because what know, we also didn't mention is. I what, think I have an application. Oh. I mean, not necessarily Jose's wheelhouse, but I think a lot of people who want to do a wildlife video, mm, this would okay. be. Because yeah. to me, like, I look at a 100 to 400 and I see, okay, this is great for birding. It's great for wildlife. Go on safari with this. Yeah. And with the SL2S and it's, you know, insane video capabilities, mm-hmm. I could totally see doing like some nature videography with this, especially if you put this in the APS-C mode mm-hmm. for video, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you've got it's a, what? 150 to 600? Yeah. Yeah. You forgot well, to mention the teleconvert. that this lens also has optical image stabilization. It does. Just, which, just like the 92 If you use it on a CL or an SL601, it's nice because mm-hmm. they don't have stabilized sensors. If you use it on the SL2 or the SL2S, it works in conjunction with the sensor-based stabilization. So another perk. Yeah, the IBIS in the SL2, SL2S is good for about five stops. Mm-hmm. And then knowing what we know already about the 9280 OIS, I'm assuming that it, it carries over and gives you about six stops total. Yeah, that's right. Image stabilization. I haven't yet really messed around with that. You know, when I went out with this lens, I was shooting with the SL2S, so I just put auto ISO with a max of like 25,000 and just shot. I, this wasn't... Just go. Yeah. Just go, yeah. <laughs> well, and I was just photographing cars. They weren't going very quickly. Um, Got it. They were just Got parked. It. So, But, you know, my experience my experience with the lens was very positive, and it's the only lens I brought with me. I made a point. Really? Because I didn't want to be distracted by other Wait, focal no lengths. 75 Noctilux? No 75 oh Noctilux, I know. Yeah. Poor me. Just the SL2S <laughs> and the 100-400. Uh, and the uh, I brought wow. the teleconverter. I didn't use it because the oh, venue... Let's, let's take a look at the teleconverter. Yeah, the venue was a little bit too um, too small for that. But let's show you guys how this works, and let me address, before you start talking about it, the obvious question. The only lens this works on is the 100-400. It doesn't work on 9280, 24 to 90, any of the other SL lenses. I've tried. It doesn't even does fit. Does it work on the 1635? Yes. No, it does not. <laughs> I've tried. It doesn't even fit. So just be aware that this is exclusively for the 100 to 400 L mount lens. But David, why don't you give them a quick walkthrough? Okay. All right. That is the Tele Extender. So it's a Leica Extender L 1.4X. And again, like Josh said, it only works. On this one lens, it is yeah. a pair. Yeah, show it to them and, and then put it on so they can see. Yep. So I'm gonna, lens, yeah. I'm gonna mount noise. This is the first time we've seen a teleconverter since the R system. Mm-hmm. So a little throw here. throwback there. Let's see. Does red, it mount? Red dot. Nope. Nope. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. It. It's always tough to do it backwards. I know. <laughs> there you go. Everyone's so judgy, but it, it doesn't add a lot of of size, and it's. It's no, and it's 180 it's grams, so it's very really, light. and but it's really firm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is a nice snug fit. There's no play at all, which is what you want when you have a a heavy lens hanging off the front of this. Obviously, you really need. It's in, critical that you use the tripod support when you are using the tele extender specifically, mm-hmm. because it puts a lot of strain on these two mount points. So I even think that's in the instructions. There, yeah, I mean, I would never answer. mount this lens on a tripod without using the tripod foot. If you put it, even without teleconverter, if you put something like this, on, it could strain, you're straining your lens mount yeah, it's ne- not, it's needlessly. Not good. So not I, wouldn't, good. I wouldn't do that with any any camera or any lens like that. Yeah. Uh, but now you have a 140 to 560 mm-hmm. F6, I don't even remember. Can you put it on a, put it on a camera and tell me what the aperture is? <laughs> I don't even remember. It's one stop, basically. So uh, it's one stop of light loss and 40% focal length gain. So if you're shooting outside, Piece of cake, shooting inside. Well, I don't know what you need that much reach for inside. Maybe a nighttime zoo outing or something. Nighttime zoo outings. Okay, so we're looking at. Will he, does he extend it? Do you have your CL here? Yes. In the, is it in the building or? Maybe it, it's in the. Yeah, it's in is the there, building. Is and there I can, a battery that's in it? Uh, probably. Well, my point being, if someone's asking if it works on the CL, I haven't tried it yet. So if we get a second for, for David to run out and grab his CL. Yeah, when jo- Josh will flip over the computer so I can yeah. discreetly excuse myself <laughs> and crawl on the ground next yes, to the dog. Yes. So oh. yeah, you, you can see here, I'm just going to show Jose. That's a 7.1 there. Can we see that? There we go. So that's 7.1 maximum aperture. And then as I zoom it, uh, what did we end up at? Nine. F9. F9. Yep, there you go. Okay, so we're at 7.1 to F9. With the tele extender. And no, the extender does not work on the 24 to 70. No, it like, does I'll not. Like, I'll reiterate, it only works on the 100 to 400. So, I tried it on Josh, every single one. Does it work on any lens except for the it 100 It does not. I okay. test, I just, the first thing that I did when I got it, I was like, will it work on this? No. Will it work on this? No. 
It's over and over. And that, none of the lenses have the recess in the back to so fit it. So what'd you say the number was on this again? So 140 to 560, right? 140 to 560, 7.1 to f9. That is very compact. Yeah. That is very, very compact. And then if you put that camera in APS-C mode, then you get a 3... 260 to... Hold math, math, math. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold, hold, hold math. All right, what do we got? Let's see. So if we do uh, 150 times 1. 1.5, 180. Wait, was it 140? It was right. 100 times 1.4? 140 yep. times 1. Point, no, 1.5. Oh, 210. Okay, 210. Right, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, 210. Wow, 2, and you said 560 10, times 1.5. 1. 5. So an 840. A 210 to 840, 20 megapixels on the SL2. Or 4K video. I want to address a comment real quick uh, that the this gets in your way. It, All you have to do is, either, if you don't want to take it off, you just unloosen the knob here and... Put it on top. I do that all the time yeah. with the 90s. I don't. I, I don't ever take these off usually because it'll get lost. Like yep. David lost the one for the. No, I didn't lose it. It's in my bag. <laughs> but I also don't want it under my hand when I'm hand holding. So I literally just do this. I put it. Uh, you want to show the close up? Yeah, but okay. I'm gonna. I am gonna argue though. Yes. Well, I'm not gonna argue. I'm going to uh, make a, a a uh, emphatic point. Okay. Make an emphatic point. So yeah, that's great. Like you can see, we just reversed it here by loosening the knob, and then you can turn this in 90 degree increments. Uh, which is great. Also, if you want, that's intended use is to take vertical pictures without having to take off the tripod or move your head. Yeah. Now, I am going to make the point that especially because th you have a front zoom ring and you do not want to touch the rear focus ring, this acts as a really nice handhold where mm -hmm. I'm not accidentally touching the middle ring because my hand is sort of, it's like a guard. Mm. See, mm -hmm. and then I can just manipulate the zoom and use this as a handhold, which I think is uh, is pretty nice. Yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna make that point. That uh, that's my. That's fair enough. That's my argument. Uh, I mean, and the 9280 and, has and this... it balances without tipping. Oh, over. there you go. 9280 does the same thing where you could turn that foot to the top because it's also in the way for me. That one is that one is in the way because it it's protrudes big, too far. It's bigger. Yeah, this yeah. is a much lower profile, um, so I think it is easier to get to, to get away with. Um, keeping it on the bottom if you wanted to, but you could also just take it off. Just don't lose it because I don't know if I'll ever be able to get you another one. I'll tell you what, Josh. Why don't yes. you uh, go to the uh, website there, second tab, and show them the the options of the um, just what the, the lens comes in price wise, and then the uh, adapter, and then I can sneak away. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> hold on a second. I'm gonna go to pull SL. up right here. Okay. Uh, Jose, you want to go to the computer? Thank you. So, just establishing any reference points here while David grabs his uh, CL, sneaks away, and there's a dog on the floor. <laughs> Don't step on him. Seems fluffy. Uh, um, the new 100 to 400 comes in at 2195. Uh, here it is on LancasterMammy.com, which is us, in case that's not clear. <laughs> and then the teleconverter, which you'll find here at the bottom, comes in at 875. And I even made sure to write in italic lettering that it's only for the 100 to 400. So please don't buy it without that lens and then expect it to work on something else. Um, all the tech specs are here. You can see. Um, now, we don't have these yet. I know that's always the challenge with with uh, new Leica product. I will say deliveries have been solid. We have seen two or three good deliveries so far and expect that to continue. So this is not like a lot of those other Leica stuff where it's like, woe is me, we're never going to get it. These have been coming in along with teleconverters. So I'm, I'm positive these will be in stock soon. I mean a month or two, maybe less. Um, so if you want one, don't be discouraged. Um, and the teleconverter, you should? Yeah, show that. I showed that as well. Great. Yeah, we're just talking about availability a little bit. And they've been coming in almost one-to-one, -one, almost one-to-one -one lens to teleconverter. Perfect, perfect. perfect. Sort of. Um, so I've been happy about that. Um, should we show some images? Well, I, I have magic. magic oh, oh, you have your seal. But does, does it work? <laughs> yeah, uh, it's like got one bar. But <laughs> I, I'm going to show this also. This is this is the tripod foot. Ah, okay. And Jose gets a close up here. I want to show this is my tripod foot for the 90 to 280 that's Arca Swiss compatible. <laughs> because what did I do? I actually mounted a uh, a plate on here so that I could put it onto my uh, stuff. It's a old old Kirk plate, and it works great, and it's metal, and it it hasn't hasn't failed me yet. But it's not quite as elegant as the the built in one. So I'm just going to show that super quick. This is the, the foot on the 90 to 280, and you can see the profile there. Mm -hmm. it, it, it does get in the way. Uh, I mean, I, 
this is not hand holdable here and holding there, this always gets in the way. So like Josh said, I always have to move this out of the way because this is my zoom ring here. On the 100-400, this is so much more ergonomic that I can actually hold on to this and uh, easily zoom just with my, my thumb and forefinger. So I, I think that the redesign is, is quite nice versus the original uh, 90 to 280 foot. And to address a question I saw in the chat, the 100 to 400 is manufactured in Japan, as is the 24 to 70. If you haven't seen the 24 to 70 episode and want a little more insight into how that process works, you should watch it. We won't rehash it all here. With but... the teleconverter? Oh, with the teleconverter on the C. Okay, okay. Let's all right. Let's see if so, it works. So there you go. That is, your, is... is your framework current? Nope. That is a. C I mean, well, I hope so. Uh, this, <laughs> this, this, is a, this is my CL here, and I want the truth. Oh, low battery status. Camera turns you off. Got a charger sneaking around here somewhere. Oh, uh, uh, it was like just enough to turn on and tell me it didn't work. Uh, well, it fits on the CL it, if all it, else fails. But somebody in the chat said that they they tried it and it works. Oh well. Uh, that's quite all right. It was worth the try. Um, anyway, so that's the reason that because the 9280 is 7295, so more than three times the price of the 100 to 400. There's a number of reasons for that, but certainly the country of manufacture is a big one. Ah. Um, what do we got? Better. Another battery? You know, yeah. like they can make it a bit more affordably in Japan, so they pass the savings along to you. All right. <laughs> all right. Is this going to work? I don't know. <sighs> Here we go. Yeah, wow. full battery. Yeah, yeah, full battery in the studio. Oh, this is a momentous. Somebody, somebody, mark this for a timestamp later. Okay, timestamp. Battery, charge battery in the studio, Wait, and please. battery status indication might change with this lens. That's a new error, or not error message, but that's a new message. So that's uh, that's different. I've never yeah. seen that message before. Don't know what that means, but okay. We're sharing. It's, we're sharing well, the experience with you guys. Well, it could be because of the optical stabilization. Uh, no, the resolution of the CL does not change with this lens. It's still 24 megapixels. Wow, look at that. It's just cropping the focal length equivalency because the sensor is not full frame. Does it work? Uh, it doesn't... What's your settings? It doesn't work very well. Well, it's really dark in here, dude. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it doesn't work well with the... Um... So you're at you're at 7.1, which is yeah. insanely dark. For a CL especially. But it does function. Yeah, it's super dark. I'm going to just take the... Uh... Yeah, try that. Take that off, yeah. Yeah, so you're only going to get a cropping of resolution when you mount this a CL or TL lens on the SL. Then there's a crop. But on the other way around, you're you're getting all 24 megapixels of the CL. Hmm, that's interesting. You probably have a weird setting going on. Yeah, it's... Uh... Is your firmware current? No. Well, that's why. This guy. Thank you. Wait a minute, you're probably... <laughs> What about my lecturing? We have a few videos about that. Uh, yeah, I can direct you to a video where I talk about how to do your firmware if you'd like to see that. So the links. issue is it doesn't really focus, achieve focus. It does work. Let me see. It does work. Give me this piece of chalk. All right, go for it. Uh, okay, so let's see. First thing I'm going to check. Your what? Well, yeah, he's one version. No, 4.0 4. is 4.1 of the CL. I can never remember now. You put me on the spot. Uh... I mean, it should, in theory, work. It I should. Like. It's just not. I think it's too dark because uh, it's really dark over there. I'm just playing around with some settings. Yeah, four point one. Yeah, 4. that's 1. why four point one is current. So you, you, um, this is a great example of why firmware matters because. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on. Ready? It works. It works. Wait, did you get focus? Yeah. Huh? Yeah, yeah. See, is it sharp? This is, this is great. How are you enjoying watching me take a picture? That's uh, what we do. Let's see. What do you think? Well. It's actually it's pretty darn sharp. Look at that. Oh, wow. Look at <laughs> I that. can see the stabilization working. There, that, look at that. that. <laughs> you know that face if you watched the show before. Anyway, that was a little bit ridiculous, but the point is... It works. Yes, it even works. without the current firmware, it was a little bit slower than I'd like in this ridiculously dark studio. But yes, if you have a CL, I wouldn't say you should go out and buy this lens for it, but if you already have a CL and you have this lens, it is a fun combination and it does okay, that, work. And to give some idea, that yeah. is... That's one thirtieth of a second, so it does show the image stabilization works because yeah. there's no stabilization in the camera, and that's ISO 6400. That worked out pretty that well. That is how dark that is. That worked out pretty well. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I'd rather use, like Gigi's saying, the the 55 to 135 on the CL. Of course, yeah. it's not the same reach, but 
But it's, look at the size of that. Yeah, it's quite a bit smaller and lighter and <laughs> faster aperture. We use the 55 135s for our uh, uh, close-up cameras here. Is that a 180 Elmer at R sitting there? It is. Well, that's it what is. we got to talk is. about. So, All right, we're going to get there. Let's. Well, why don't we get into that a little bit? So what I want to ask you, David. I'm going to say this is an edge case, edge yeah. use case. So we're, And then we're going to show, I'm going to show images, but we're doing good on time. So, um, well, let's look at questions first. Well, I've been answering them as they've been coming in. Jose, have I missed anything? Hmm. I mean, we're not going to talk about Canon and Nikon and Sony, but... No, because we're not... I mean, this is a Leica show. <laughs> we're just like, Leica, we're, so. we, would, we would be speaking out of turn if we were trying to compare to Canon and Nikons and Sony's. There's a lot of fantastic content creators out there that are doing things like that. Um, but the reason you watch us, aside from our charming personalities and plaid shirts, plaid shirts. is because shirts. we're talking about Leica. So For sure. We wouldn't try to step on the toes of a manufacturer's product we don't know anything about. Right. That's, that's just not our thing. So that's okay. Doesn't mean they're not good. Just means we don't know anything about it. So <laughs> that this that they exist. But anyway, I want to ask you a question, David. Yes. Which is, can you break down for me based on what we have here on the table and your experience? <laughs> a lot what, on the table. Well, no, but what, no, not everything here. But what what are the general options mm -hmm, mm -hmm. if I want if I have an SL2 or an SL2S? Sure. And I want reach and I don't want to crop. Got it. Can you break down maybe my autofocus options and Absolutely. my manual focus yeah, options? Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Okay. And, and we're just going to ignore the 100-400. It sort of like doesn't exist yet. Yeah. Okay. So this is, let's go back a couple weeks. 100-400, not an option. What were our options? And we covered a lot of these in our SL lens episodes mm -hmm. and the SL, where are we now, mm -hmm. updates. Mm -hmm. Check those out, by the way. We have yeah. them all archived. A lot of good stuff there. A lot of good stuff. All right. Uh, option, I think the best option yeah, overall. The, not the best. I mean, I'm saying hands right. down the best option. Yeah. Okay. 90 to... 90 to 280, Apo Vario Umrit. Amazing, right? We already talked about this. It's uh, prime lens performance in yeah. zoom. It, it's unmatched. It's the best option, bar none, for telephoto lens solution on the SL2. It's weather sealed. Yes. It's native. Yes. It's 28 to f4. Yes. Uh, it's pretty fast autofocus. It's image stabilized, mm -hmm. so it even works on older generation SLs. Mm -hmm. It's a great lens, and it's ridiculously sharp, wide open through the range, every focal length. Uh, it also focuses pretty close as well. Next option, if for uh, let's say, are we talking autofocus? Yeah, there's only one other one. Is there's that only the, this the one, yeah. right. Okay. Uh, besides the 100-400, this is also an option. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a 180 millimeter S lens. This is a, an Apo Elmar, mm -hmm. I think it's an Apo yeah, Elmar Tele S. Apo right? Tele Elmar No, Apo Elmar. Sorry. No, it is, I was right. Yeah, you're right, sorry. Apo Elmar it's been a long day. S. And uh, Jose can close up on that. There you go. And this is a, a lovely lens. This is a 180 millimeter f3.5 for the S system. Uh, I, I wrote a whole write up on S lenses. So you can read my S lens compendium on Red Dot Form. And I publish samples on that. This lens is, is really, really sharp, beautiful fall off, bokeh. It's also fully weather sealed, it is autofocus on the on the uh sl mm -hmm. with the adapter that which i don't have which we don't have right now but, jack has it if he's but there is an adapter and, <laughs> yes. it, and the adapter has a little tripod foot which is cool yeah so not a bad option and these are available pretty inexpensively yeah, relatively now. inexpensive so the 180 s lens is the only other autofocus weather sealed electronic aperture controlled option you have if you yes. want some reach um you do need the s adapter l to make that yes work. and i and i just want to reiterate this. I talked about it in the article. We've talked about it in previous episodes. But uh, just because this is a 180 lens for medium format camera for the S, like S system, mm. it is a 180 millimeter. Mm. When you mount it on, a, on an SL, on a full frame body, it's 180 millimeters. There is no conversion. There's no loss of aperture. Yeah. There's no different focal length. It's a 180. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Moving so that's, on. That's so we have basically three autofocus options: 90 yes. to 80, 100 to 400. Now 180. Yes. Uh, Correct. Within this is within obviously the Leica uh, product yep. catalog. So now we're going to get to manual everyone focus. everyone's favorite lenses, which are the manual <laughs> focus options we have, of which I have three to okay. have you demonstrate for sure, us. Sure. Why don't we start with the zoom, and then we'll go to the two primes. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So this is the. The Vario Elmar R 105 to 280 f 4.2. Uh, I always got a kick out of that from back in the day that it's 4.2 instead of f 4, which is it's like <laughs> such a like a thing. It's like a tenth of a stop or something like that. No, if they called it f 4, no one would have even been able to contradict them. This was come out and came out in the age of film. 
So it wasn't even that precise. Um, leave it to Leica to say, oh no, it's a 4.2. <laughs> Uh, it is also an 82 millimeter front diameter. How convenient. How convenient. Uh, no, it's a 77. Oh, is this 77? Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. 77. Me? Okay. I am. It's an odd size, yeah. Uh, oh, I should mention the uh, the 180 S lens is 72. Yeah. That is true. that is an odd size. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's kind of a cool lens. I have actually used this lens. I have, I used to shoot with this on the R9 and the DMR back in the before times. And actually, this is one of the best... Uh, tripod foot designs because let's mm. see jose gets a close-up on that can you see it's this beautiful contoured metal tripod foot and it just sits in your in the palm of your hand so perfectly and uh you can just work that manual focus so well uh it's really cool slide out shade 105 to 280. this is probably most I'd say most similar to the 90 to 280. This is like our, or I'd say this is the SL equivalent of this lens. Although it's quite a bit heavier. I actually weighed it 2,060 grams on my scale. Really? Versus 1,714 grams. So 300, 300 grams and change heavier than the 90 to 280 wow. without autofocus or any yeah. of the other benefits. And no weather sealing. So the upside here is this is a theoretically more affordable way to get reach versus the 90 to 80. But the downside is these are not that easy they're not to common. find. They're not common. They almost all need to be serviced before you can use it thoroughly. And of course, it's manual focus, mm -hmm. manual aperture, not weather sealed, not dust sealed, not stabilized. Now, the not stabilized part is not as relevant on an SL2. And the manual aperture is not a big deal. You just use that. The upside, right? though, yeah. to, to this, aside from all the things I said also, is if you really like a manual focus experience or maybe you're doing cinema work, mm -hmm. You can't beat the feel mm -hmm. of a oh, manual no. focus so, only lens. It's so smooth. The feel of this and the yeah, other yeah, lenses yeah. David's going to show is just it's butter. When you bounce back between even the 90 to 80 to this, you're just like, oh, this is what I it know, feels I like. Know. I mean, it's just so nice. So that is the 105 280 R lens. What's the next piece we've got? And there's oh, a TC on the back of that. So I'm taking that off. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I just put it there for storage. So I'm going to go in order. Okay. And don't make sure that doesn't fall. That's Kelly's. Don't break it. Okay. <laughs> uh, this this is actually one of my R lenses that I've I've held on to because I I think it's a a little marvel. This is a 180 Apo Elmerit R 2.8, and I I got to say that because there's actually uh, two Apo Elmerits. There's a a 3.5 and a 2.8. Mm, or is well, it Apo? the Apo Tel? It's a Apo three, it's a three four. Three four, right? And then there's the Apo Summicron, and then there's the... well, no, but that's that's a beast. Yeah, but this is there's two that. versions of the Apo one hundred and eighty yeah. Almerit. Um, they're almost identical, but okay. Anyway, this is David's lens. And there's the Apo Tel it one eighty. Yeah. There's a few. Okay. This we're one's not, mine. We're not turning this into an R lens episode. No, promise. we promise. We promise. <laughs> Everyone's like, wait, is it an R-Lens episode? It's a secret R-Lens episode. This snuck, is our submarine. Uh, snuck it in there. So this this is a, a lovely lens. It's got, again, that nice slide-out shade design. And oh my word, is that just some of the smoothest focusing you'll ever feel in a lens. Uh, actually, little little known trivia here. This lens, Leica filed for a patent for the ball-bearing smooth focus system Ooh, on this lens so smooth so yeah so smooth they have a it's patented mm. and this for me has been had been uh, let's say the standard bearer in terms of optical quality for a medium length telephoto and what i loved about this it's so much smaller mm. than say you know a typical uh 70 to 200 or 70 to 180 leica uh they had other manufacturers 70 to 200 80 to 200 mm. it's so compact I mean, this is basically the same size as, say, like the 90 Sumalux M. Uh, a little bigger, but it also, it's funny, it's a, 60, it's a 67 filter, I know, which is it, the same I size as, the, as that lens. Yeah, so th this, yeah. Is, this is cool. Uh, I kept this long after I didn't have the R system and used it on the M with an adapter. And I also, and actually, when I first tested out the SL601, I also used this yeah. with an R adapter, and this was my telephoto because yeah. this didn't exist yet. So that's something to worth uh, worth mentioning. Just talking about adapters, this is I'll have David show this the R adapter L. There's a couple of for a number of aftermarket solutions. I have not seen any of them as nice as the Leica version, and it also passes through the ROM, ROM contact information yeah. and has a nice um, tripod socket on the bottom, and it comes with a foot, which I just didn't bring, but yeah, um, and it's gasketed too, which is yeah. nice. Yeah, and it's it's you know the, the nice stainless Solid. steel mount. I mean, it's a beautiful. It's a sweet adapter. Um, yeah, this one's a good one. Yeah. All right. Last What's the up? last one. Last the up. big the big oh, one. Oh god, the beast. Okay. It's actually not. <laughs> this isn't actually anywhere near the it's, beast. It's uh, it's 1,846 grams, so about 150 grams heavier than I would beast. say the beast, and I have used it, 
is is the app of Sumacron. Yeah, which I oh didn't, my gosh, I didn't bring, right? it's like that. You can see the future through there. It's a monster. This also has been considered a legendary piece of optics, one of the sharpest telephotos ever made. It is a 280 Apo Elmar or Apo yeah, Telet. Oh, Apo Telet. Yeah. yeah, you got to keep. It's that been there. a while since you know we had these Apo Telet R 280 f4, and just again got to keep stick with that slide out shade. I love on this one how wide the focus is. It's like, oh, just, oh, just to, hold it in. You know, oh, and it's buttery. I have to say thank you, Kelly, uh, for letting us promise. Oh, my gosh. If you're watching. We oh, my gosh. Yes, it's amazing. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Calm down. That is like, <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. It's that. That's one fingertip. Ugh, that is disgustingly nice. David, David's having a moment right now. I'm having, listen, <laughs> I'm just going to go sneak. All right. Um, it also has that really cool... Uh, tripod foot design that just sits in your hand. Look at the strap lugs on it. Does well, your lens have strap lugs? So does the 105 to do it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I you... only use lenses that have strap lugs. I don't know about the rest of y'all. <laughs> strap lugs. Yeah. All right. So that that's a fantastic lens. Uh, it's it's definitely a big step up in terms of weight over the 180 uh, 28. Yeah. So all right. Now that we've talked about those, let's talk a little bit. Or let's show. A how, do bit. So, how do they compare? So this wouldn't be an episode of the show. Mm -hmm. If I didn't spend some time doing some fun and exciting comparisons, I love fun and exciting. Comparisons. I didn't have as available as much to me and as much time as I would have liked, but I still made a point to do some key testing. So the, I tested four lenses um, comparatively: mm -hmm. the 180 Apo Elmerit, because that's a standard bearer for David; mm -hmm. the 280 Apo F4, our lens. So those two are lenses, which are kind of the two premium telephotos in terms of performance. I, mean, I think they're regarded as some yeah. as being these benchmark lenses. Uh, the yeah. 9280 and the 100 to 400. And what I did with the 9280 and the 100 to 400 is I tested them at 100 280 excuse me 100 180 perfect 280 yeah. and then I just did 400 just for fun. Um nice. Nice. so what well, what you'll see is sort of how everything falls in in place. So first I want to show you can we go to the screen? Uh there we, we go. go. Super exciting test charts. Yeah, I'll show real pictures later, I promise. Uh, so this is the 180 Apo Elmer at R uh, with the R adapter L, and I am assigning a lens profile in the camera, so you can uh, 178. See. I love how I thought 170 mm. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I manually told it what lens it's on but no, it decided 178 was was the way to go. <laughs> well, that's such a Leica thing. That, to do. that is a hilarious Leica thing. Let's compare this to the not that. To Here, let me move that out of your oh, way. Thank you. <laughs> Just like. So here we have the, oh, this is 181. Uh, it's unacceptable. Um, <laughs> so on the right, we have the 100 to 400 at 180, wide open at 5.8, which is where it falls at 180. And on the left, we have the 180 Apo R. First glance, look at the contrast difference. The modern lens has so much more contrast, wow. which is not a surprise. But then we look at the sharpness difference. This is really where my mind gets blown because the 180 Apo is a gold standard for telephoto performance. And here we have what's supposed to be like a, you know, I don't want to say second tier, but compared to the 9280. Now, now what are yeah. these apertures that we're looking at? So this is, is that uh, accurate? This is 2.8, wide open 2.8. Okay. And this is wide open at 5.8. So even though this is 5.8 and this is 3.4, it's not correct. The camera's guessing. Do you, do you um, have that at 5.6 on the... Uh... I do. Let's see. Yeah, let, let's see it head to head here. Because I am obviously wide open is one thing. There we go. Yeah. Let's see. Okay. Well, give it a second. Listen, I got I got to give my yeah, boy. Now we're seeing chance. some parity, but the yeah. thing is, now we're talking about two stops versus wide open. But you know, it's five six. They're about five, the same, six. which is insane. Oh, uh, uh, oh, I I think the one eighty uh, a little better in the corner uh, here. They're very very close. It's really close. They're very very yeah, close. I think this corner is a little bit no, They're very close. So. That is mm -hmm. that actually is interesting because this is what I have discovered testing these sort of not made in Germany, uh, differently designed um, L mount lenses, which is they don't give you the same performance that we see like in the Apo Sumacrons. They actually give you a performance that's more like M and R lenses. Yeah. So you get that kind of feel, that kind of focus fall off, and that rendering like you were used to, a little bit more modern with all the modern features. So kind of a nice alternative. So here, basically, what we're saying is that the 180 Apo R, which is the, the standard bearer, stop down to stops, is basically as good as the 100 to 400 180 wide open. Wow, that's okay. what we're saying here. So wow. let's take a look at the 280 on the 100 to 400. 
All right, so this is 280 R lens on the left and 280 what? on the what? right. Now, here is where things really get interesting. Whoa. Look at the contrast difference. Wow. Look at the detail difference here. I mean, and the other thing is, when I'm doing this test, I'm using autofocus on the 100 to 400, just zap, shoot. On the 280 or 4, I'm like, needed the dialing in the last little bit just to get it exactly. Yeah, you know, how exactly how the are thing. you doing it again? Could you demonstrate it? No, no, it? I have the one time only deal. Okay. Um, they're very close. Wow. They're very close. I mean, you have to ignore the contrast difference, kind of get, get out of your head. And again, let's um, see. Do you have the, do you have yeah, the 280 was, at 5.6? Yeah, I do. Let's there see you. that. So 280. Oops, they swapped. Oh, put it back. All right. So 280 on the left. And here we go. Let's see. Give it a second. We're getting our contrast wow. back for sure. Wow. But there, yeah, same thing. So this is a this is a stop difference. Now we're seeing similar performance. So that's impressive. I got it. Okay, a couple things are impressive here. Yes. Look at the corners here. Yeah. Let's see. What does that look like? About mm -hmm. the same. About the same. Yeah. 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 Sweet. Now let's. Wow. Um, wow, wow. Okay. Let's get to the comparison everybody's asking about, or maybe, which is how does the 9280 compare to the uh, 100 or 400? So. On the left, we've got the 9280 at 100 millimeters, wide open at f2.9, which is where it falls at 100. Mm -hmm. On the right, we have the 100 to 400 at 100 millimeters at f5, which is where it starts at 100. Let's take a look. Now, they're going to be slightly different because of how they attach to the camera on the tripod, so the positioning is not exactly the same. I will um, try to get that There you close. go. Yeah, there once you go. lock them in. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. Here we're seeing center performance of the 100 to 400 is good. 90 to 80, better. No surprise there. I mean, and of course, as we start to get out from the center is where the differences are really going to show. Now, I think you should make a point. These are accurate apertures. So you have f2.9 yeah. yeah. on the 90 to 280 versus f5. And this is there. what you're paying. Well, one of the things you're paying for on the 90 to 280, which is the ability to shoot at 100 at f2.9. Mm -hmm. Let's say 280 for the sake of argument. With corner performance that is beyond what you're going to see at f5 on a 100 or 400, beyond what you're going to see on any of the R lenses, beyond what you're going to see on almost anything else in a zoom. Yep. A exactly. zoom. That's the key. It's a zoom lens, prime <laughs> lens performance, which is, again, the, the line that we've been slinging for years on the SL lenses because there, I mean, this is mind-blowingly good corner performance wide open at yeah. 2.9. Well, if, if we yeah, stop down, sure. what do we got there? Let's see. So now we're going to look six at versus five, six. five, six versus F eight. So one oh, wow. stop down for each. Okay. I'm just trying to do, you know, as equivalent as I can in terms of like stopping down from wide open. Now the 9280 is just bonkers in the center. 100 to 400 is closer. Yeah. A little bit lower contrast, contrast. A little, contrast. A little bit lower contrast and the fine detail still. Yeah. That 9280 is, is a monster. Is a monster. Wow. Um, Let's look at a little bit longer here. I mean, I don't think that was any surprise, but no, it's nice to see it, though. Nobody is surprised. I am not surprised. Okay, let's see. What do we have? 180 versus let's 180? Let's do 180 versus 180, both wide open. 9280 falls at 3.4, and the 100 to 400 falls at 5.8. This is actually 181 millimeters. Ooh. So, Ooh. again, we're seeing the 9280. They're getting a little bit closer now as we get longer, but 9280 still comes out on top in the center, and of course... And it's in, more than a stop faster. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Corners are close, closer. You know, as you get longer, it's going to get a little closer. Mm, I think the 9280 is a little, still better. Yeah, a little bit. They're they're closer here. And uh, then you have five six versus five six ish. Let's see, what do you got? Let's see this and this. So here five, we got six okay five six versus f eight. So this is stop down on the 9280 and the 100 to 400. Let's take a look. See, so sharp. 9280 is still coming out ahead, even a stop down. Man, that lens is. Remo. Yeah, it's so nice. good. I mean, it's look nice. at the detail here. You're, but, you're actually almost looking like you're starting to get a little bit more ray mm. here. I don't know what that is. Maybe that's just a monitor. But the, the the resolving power of the 9280, you can start you can see the texture in the paper of my <laughs> uh, of the test target that you got for me online. Look at the difference there. Wow. Yeah. But look, I'm Yes. I, I still think the 100 400 is putting up a very well, that's, respectable. That's what I yeah. again. That is very what these lenses are about. 24 to 70, the new Sumacrons and the 100 to 400. They're giving you performance that's not what you're paying for on the Apo SL primes and on the 90 Apo or the 90 to 280 or the 24 mm -hmm. to 90 because those are all top tier flagship. You're not going to get better than that 
That's as good as it gets. So what these are giving you is a different kind of performance, not as objectively sharp in the corners, but more like what we're used to with M lenses and R lenses for a very yeah. different look. For sure, for sure. Which I think is awesome. And at a much nicer price point. It's a win-win. All right, what else do we have here? Now let's take a look at 280. Okay. So this is 90 280, wide open at f4 on the left, 100 or 400 wide open at f6.2 on the right. So let's take a look, see here. The contrast game is strong. You thought the contrast on the R lenses was bad. No, actually, this is pretty good. They're pretty close at 280 in the center. Let's start to look at the corners. Up, oh, 9280 is starting to shine here. Wow. Wow. I mean, all the way out to the edge. Yeah. Like, that is no... And that's wide open. Look down here. That is no joke. Yeah. That is no joke. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. And, and the contrast that it's maintaining across the frame, consistency. And that's really what you're paying for for those Apos is that across the frame, corner to corner mm -hmm. consistency. Nice. Wow. And again, this is all this is also wide open. So we get the last thing I'll show is we can show stop down. There we go. So it's 5.6 at 280 on the 90 to 280 and F8 at 280 on the 100 to 400. These should be pretty close, I would hope. You're not buying the 90 to 280 to shoot it at F8 all day. So not 90 to 280 still wins. Wow. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, look at the difference here. Yeah, yeah. Huge difference. 90 to 280 is an animal again no surprise no surprise just like the 24 to 90 we talked about last yeah, week for sure which was better than the supercron sl's primes mm -hmm. so prime lens or beyond performance in a zoom which is insane yeah so you can go back to us jose um wow oh uh do you want to show the 400 result just, oh just uh yeah yeah sorry sorry no, no comparison just yeah let's can see we, what how it performs yeah so here's 400 millimeters wide open at 6.3 so that's wide open give it a second to render it was wide open yeah Starting a little softer. That's what I would expect at the very, very long end. Not bad. Contrast is decent. Not bad. A little lower. You're losing contrast a little bit. You still see the texture in the paper. I mean, the magnification is insane. Yeah, though. it's yeah, yeah, yeah. This test chart should have been further away, but I didn't move the tripod because I would have driven me crazy. For sure. Um, I would say the sweet spot for this lens is around 180 200, 180 to 200 or so is for me anyway. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't have anything to compare it to at 400. So. <laughs> well, that that's what we're saying, right? Yeah. There's nothing. There's it's no like, other lens I can I can show. This you is this is the best lens at 400 millimeter yeah. that Leica makes. So I think performance is very impressive. I mean, especially for the price point and the weight and the 4x zoom range, which you don't have on. And look, else. it's outperforming these that used mm -hmm. to be the gold standard, the reference, right? I mean, people scramble for those R lenses, and, and it's and it's kind of you know getting close to where the 90 to 280 is in that range in the in the 100 to 280 range it's not that far off it really is not that far off um obviously the 90 to 280 is it, it that that is the measuring stick by which every other lens is now measured in yeah. the telephoto range and you know funny story yes. and i'm sure i've mentioned this before we were just talking about this earlier oh, yeah. that's a good story though you can tell it again so when i was doing my review for the 90 to 280 back in what 16 seven years ago yeah obviously i had this lens and i'm like okay no way zoom is going to put up against this guy right here because that was our our mindset at the time was like we're still learning about how good the sl lenses are we didn't really fully understand no that. we didn't fully understand and i'm so i'm saying okay i'm gonna go out and and i did some similar i didn't have fancy test targets i had a fence <laughs> so i went and i actually drove somewhere to find a fence in a neighborhood that was evenly lit and had you no know, nice boards and stuff like that. And I set up my tripod and I did a whole series of tests across the board and I went, you know, 100% magnification and I'm just tweaking the focus perfectly every single shot. And I shoot a whole series with the 180 and I shoot a whole series with the 90 to 280. And I come back, I actually drove back to the office, <laughs> edited the photo. I was like, oh, I screwed up the test. Mm -hmm. I screwed up the test. I, remember, I, yeah. I, mis I misfocused. I misfocused the, the 180 or I had camera shake or something. Oh, I went in the car. I got back. I drove out to a different spot. I'm like, okay, I'm going to do another test. And I did another test and I came back and the same results because I could not believe that a zoom lens, an autofocus zoom lens with image stabilization, because we were always taught image stabilization softens the image mm -hmm. because it has a moving element mm -hmm. versus this, which is just this amazing reference piece of glass. And this just, well, you could see the results for yourself. It just crushed it. I mean, it just crushed it. And I had to readjust my whole expectation yeah. about what the SL system could do 
And that was just on the SL601. That was oh, a yeah. 24 megapixel. Yeah, yeah. Like if, if I had the 47, <laughs> Forget it. it would have been a whole nother ball game. And, and, and this just, is a true story, yeah. by the way, because I was there. I, I think the first time was outside of a was it outside of a Nucci Brothers. Like, I don't know. It was in downtown Hollywood. Yeah, I remember because yeah, we yeah, yeah. going out back in that alleyway yeah, and finding yeah. that fence. And the thing is, now we expect it. Yeah. But yet, every time I do these kinds of tests and I put one of those top tier SL lenses, whether yep. the zooms or the primes, against anything, I am continually reminded at how good they are, especially in the corners. Especially on the zooms and the, the consistency across the frame is corner what, to corner is what blows my mind. Corner all, to corner. Every time. Well, look what we just saw. Corner yeah. to corner, wide open. Yeah. And stop down just gets ever so much better. Yeah. Just like yeah. that much better. Yeah. I mean, that's what you're paying for. It is now. I'm not an engineer, so I couldn't speak to the mechanics of it. But it is extremely difficult <laughs> to make a lens that's a zoom that has all this functionality perform yeah. at that level. I mean, that's why we've never seen it before. No. That's why these lenses blew us away when we started yeah. testing them and continued to, continued to do that. Um, I'm going to show a couple of photos, but I, before I do that, um, Jose, I'm, there's probably questions that we've yeah, missed. Yeah, we can't see the screen when we're looking at yeah. Lightroom here. So, so what do you... Um, let me see. Take a look. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I have yeah. some live view shooting here. We can we can throw the lens on and, yeah. and shoot Oscar. Yeah. Oscar looks very dark over there, though. Yeah, that's very dark. Did my light turn off? I don't know. It doesn't look very on right now. <laughs> Need to fix it? Get up. Okay. Jose can fix it. Well, Jose's got to look for questions. Fine. Mm, that's why the bear's dark, yeah. <laughs> All right, I got, I got a question here. Okay. Can you combine the R2M and M2L adapters to mount an R lens on an SL <clears throat> rather than using the R2L adapter? Yes. Yes. Not as sturdy, but yeah. Yeah, it's more... Works fine, but it works fine. That's I used to do that all the time, actually. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. A um, couple other questions about the CL... Maybe we can do some testing at some point on the 100 to 400. Yeah, we need to do, but... we need to revisit that. We'll talk more about the 100 or 400 in the future as David and I use it more, as we use it with the extender, as you use it more, Jose. I, I can speak to this that that I have used the 90 to 280 on the CL, and it it actually is a really great option for that because you're getting uh, what 135 to 420. Yes. Yeah, 135 to 420 from the nine the 90 to 280 on the CL, and I I know a lot of people who who actually do do that. And that was one of the uh, cheeky answers I referenced earlier. Remember, we're like, oh, can <laughs> yeah. you have a teleconverter? The, tele the teleconverter. For and they're this, like, for the yeah, we have a 1.5X teleconverter already. You do? Yeah, with no loss of aperture. How's that possible? I like a CL. I like, <laughs> see what you did there. And now you can just use APS-C mode on the SL2 for the same basic exactly. effect. It's exactly. 20 versus 24. It's very close. Yeah. And you get stabilization, which is Double nice. stabilization. It's true. Yeah. Um, so yes, that is that is the answer there. So we will experiment and continue to play with this. It's a it's a very very new lens that we are still excited about getting our hands on um, mm -hmm. in sort of practical situations. So yeah. Um, I, so might, I, might, I might even take one or, to yeah. Iceland next week. Oh, you should. Yeah. I don't think we've tried this either. But would you say the one hundred or four hundred has faster tracking when shooting moving objects? My initial yeah. reaction is yes. I have not tested that enough to give you a definitive yes. I've only played with it a little bit. But my feeling from the autofocus is that it is a little bit snappier than the 9280 because there's a lot less glass to move around. But I'm going to do measure testing, and then I'll we'll have more to say on that um, at some point okay. in the future because we just haven't had as much time with this lens as we would like. But we wanted to get you guys the good stuff right away. So here we are. Okay. Um, Any Anything else? No, that's it for now. Okay, let me show. So I, I have just a couple, like four or five photos that I took when I was at this sh little car meet. Let me just pull them up here. Um, hey. It's like this, right? Well, you got to make it a little smaller. <laughs> yeah. I, oh, what a, how annoying. <laughs> Wait. I'm going to get it. There you go. I'm going to get it. You're going to get it. You got it. Uh, a little bigger, maybe. There there we go. go. Yeah. We're getting it. Perfect. Okay. Pull up the Computron. There it is. So. Um, I was doing, I was sort of <laughs> testing out different, uh, oh wait, more, a little more, uh, boom. Yeah, I was testing out different more. sort of scenarios with the 100 to 400 and the SL2S at this little car meet. Um, this is, and they're all wide open by the way. Um, I don't know. It looks like an Alfa Romeo to me. It is an Alfa Romeo. <laughs> this is actually ISO 6400 on the SL2S and this is a compressed JPEG, but you can see 6400. Yeah. Yeah. Super, super clean. Uh, can I use arrow keys? Yes. Uh, another shot, like stippled, sort of stippled lighting, 993 Turbo S, which is an insane. You can uh, take a sun pass off. Yeah, I know, right? I always do that when I go to a car <laughs> shop. The first thing I do in the BMW is I take off the take off the sun pass because I think it looks hideous. Um, 
You can zoom in a little bit. Here we go. I mean, you can see it pretty darn it's sharp. Crisp, yeah, this, yeah. Is a, this is a JPEG. And, and what's not. your impression? You know, you you shot some cards with this. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not seeing any chromatic aberration. I did not notice any. Um, I didn't. There wasn't a lot of chrome. Here we well, go. Well, here you go. Here chrome. You. Yeah, chrome for days. Um, I, it looks clean. You could see it here no. on the BMW round though, if you were going to see it. Uh, this was me trying some sort of close-up stuff just to get finer details. I was extremely far away. Is there a way to get the metadata on this? Mm, uh, info, maybe file info. File info. Where is that? Rith nope. This is at 400 millimeters. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So this is 400 wide open at 6.3. So this is me stepping back really, really far to get the compression, to mm -hmm. get the bokeh, mm -hmm. which I have to show those images. Um, is that a Z8? This is a Z8. Wow, Good that job. is really cool. Thank you. What's the shame about the Z8 is clearly it wasn't a Florida car because it has the, the drilled bumper for the for a, Right, right. But it looks like a European spec front plate, so yeah. I could let it slide. Anyway, uh, and then this is, I think the last one. No, I have one more. Uh, this is a Gemini Blue 992 GT3 Touring, which is insane. Um, but again, I'm looking at the. You're looking at the car. I'm looking at the lack of chromatic aberration on the yeah, on the wheels there. Yeah, and this is a lovely uh, challenge for the SL2S to get this nice smooth lighting um, with this color. Has a nice shape. rendering. Now, yeah. What, what are you What are you noticing up in the the trees with the the bokeh? I mean, it's versus pretty... say versus say like what you normally would use with the ninety yeah. to two eighty. It's a little more defined. Yeah. Well, it's definitely more defined than the ninety to two eighty. There's there's more depth of field with this lens, so you're not mm -hmm. going to get as creamy of a bokeh. But it's consistent, which I like. I mean, you can see corner to corner, it's got the same sort of rendering, so it's not starting to get broken up in the edges. Um, you can even look up here. So I would say it's not as pleasant as I get on the 9280, which would be the standard bearer for that, but it doesn't bother me. I mean, I like the I like the way this lens renders. And because it's not as sharp in the corners, it actually helps give a little, almost a natural vignette. Yeah. Uh, like yeah. a focus vignette to to the cars here. Um, I think it looks really nice and crisp. This is another sort of, this is my last one here. I just had a few. So so there, the bokeh actually looks uh, like of the uh, the green door there. Yeah, this, this wasn't that far away. So this did a good job. This is also at about, it's got to be pretty zoomed in. This is 211 millimeters at f5.9, f so about halfway across okay, the range okay. there. Um, what about the shutter speed? Oh, you, this was, oops. Like overall, what was your... Um, I never checked because I'm an auto ISO. This was, so we see we had a 400 of a second, 500th, 800th. Okay. So two, everything handheld, right? Oh yeah, 200, 320. So you can see I'm staying in the 500 day or the 250 to 500 range. I mean, that's always what we recommend anyway for Yeah, handheld, I'm using some negative exposure compensation most of the time. Yeah, you can see my settings there. Uh, nothing crazy. I mean, it was the morning. It was pretty early. Uh, I don't think it has the time. Oh, here we go. It's 8.40 a.m., 8.30, 8.07. Yeah, I got there about 8. So um, nice. this is my first, just my initial outing. I wanted to get a feel for the lens. And I carried it around with me for about two and a half hours mm -hmm. um, nonstop and shot with it as much as I could in a small venue. And I was very happy with it. Um, but certainly performance-wise, I thought it did a great job. Um, it, got, it gave me the compression that I was looking for, especially for this shot which was at 400 millimeters, you just couldn't get this any other way in terms of the way that this this compresses. And that car behind it, the old Alpha, is like five feet away. It's extremely close. So in order to get that to fall off, I needed to shoot wide open at 400. That's that's sort of the actionable reason I was so far away, zoomed in so much. Um, but I'm, yeah, I'm excited to keep using it. I think it's going to be These awesome. are really good, clean uh, results. Yeah, let me just pull up while I'm at it here. I did do some very quick uh, bokeh testing just to give you a feel for what the two lenses do wide open, uh, the 9280 and the 100 to 400. Uh, let me see here. So this is at 180. Okay. Nothing very fancy, just to run a gun in the store here. Okay. What you could see very quickly on the left, we have the 100 to 400 wide open at f5.8 at 180. 181, fine. And <laughs> on the right, the 9280 wide open at a 3.4. So about a stop difference, but there's a very dramatic difference in Boca. Don't ignore the camera. This is just me to, something for me to focus on. You can look at how much more clearly defined this uh, vase of flowers is on the left shot versus the right shot. I know they're not exactly the same. It was the end of the day. <laughs> let's, let's zoom in on that. <laughs> Forgive me. Um, okay. Yeah, you can definitely see the... So, can, you, can you align them? Yeah. They're a little bit off there. There, there we go. go. Perfect. So you can see that you're getting a much more defined out of focus area uh, with the 100 to 400, which makes sense because you have a smaller aperture, more depth of field. So, but it's not. 
it's not bad. It's not, no, no, it's not unpleasing. It just doesn't have that super, super silky mm -hmm. melt away bokeh that the 980 does. And where you really see that difference is on the wide end. And this one, I <laughs> ends up snuck into the shot. There he is. Oh, what a good boy. Um, <laughs> so on the right, we have 9280. On the left, we have the 100 or 400. I put the 9280 at 90 so you can see what it looks like at 28. Again, this is just the Leica store, but ignore that. The real difference here is how much more character and bokeh deliciousness you can get from the 9280 at 90 wide open versus the 100 to 400 at f5 wide open. It's a really, really big difference in practice. And one of the reasons that the 9280 does what it does and why it is what it is. Because you can look at the Leica Star Miami sort of um, video wall signage here and look at the the amount more recognizable it is on the left with the 100 to 400 versus on the right. It just melts away. So the 100 to 400 is not a bokeh lens, at least on the short end of the zoom. Once you get past 200, it actually does become quite nice. This Ooh, is 400, nice. wow. which obviously I couldn't show on the 9280 because there is no 400. This is what I was talking about with the Z8, with the, the silver car, with mm -hmm. where the other car was right behind it. Yeah. But it just melted away. Now we're getting some real bokeh. So to get the bokeh effect really from that lens, you want to be 300 or beyond wide open, and you're really going to start getting that look. Um, here's 280. I can actually compare this against the 90 to 280 if you want to see that. So here we're looking at 6.2 versus f4. Yeah, and that's a big difference, although it's not as drastic. So it makes sense, of course, the wider you go, the more noticeable it is. But here, we're still seeing a little more definition, but it's quite pleasant. But that 90 to 80 bokeh is yeah, just melts, phenomenal. Melts. Yeah. It's just magical. I love that. Um, so anyway, just you can come back to us, Jose. Hmm, just to nice. give you guys a little bit of both real world pictures and more exciting test photos. That's great. That's great. Questions? Good job, Josh. Um, None for now. Nothing else. Really? People are just intrigued by your car photos, I think. <laughs> oh, can I never show any of my car pictures? Yeah. You always talk about it. I always talk about it. Well, it's yeah. because I try to show stuff that's relevant to what we're talking about. This so. is relevant. This is yes, I know. Now. And it was a great opportunity because we had a, at an event right by my house. Nice. Like that day after we got the lens on demo. But I still want to do more stuff with it. I don't know what I have coming up. Uh, I should mention also that if you're going to be in New Jersey for the Leica Society International uh, Spring Shoot. No, Spring Meeting. Spring Meeting. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, spring Shoot is April in Rome. 21, 22, and 23. Uh, I will be there and Kirsten will be there. So if you are going to be there, if you're in attendance, please uh, come hang out with us. Come say hello. Um, we're looking forward to it. It's going to be awesome. Hopefully. I'm going to be in Iceland. You'll be in Iceland. So David will, alas, not be joining us. Alas, I got to suffer. If you want to just see half of the half of us, yeah. um, I will be there. If you happen to just be in Iceland on the on <laughs> the North Coast, you know, random randomly, then I'll see you there. Yeah. Um, no, yeah. actually, I am act very much looking forward to uh, to this upcoming trip that we have. Mm -hmm. uh, leave on Thursday, Friday to uh, to go lead a wonderful trip. Uh, in spring, which is a shoulder season in in Iceland, mm -hmm. uh, with a great group of uh, our workshop attendees. Yeah. But you should bring the hundred or four hundred. I'm I'm very I'm gonna much. Make, I'm going to make it. sure you don't you don't forget it because I think that yeah. the st seeing the stuff that you've done out there, it'll mm -hmm. it'll work really well. You're going to love having that Arca Swiss tripod foot. Yeah, that's going to be just so convenient. Just I pop mean, it on there. And get it in my mind, what I'm thinking is, you know, all these like breaking waves and things like that mm -hmm. were in the distance, and mm -hmm. there's. I don't know if we're going to see them, but there is um, kind of a well-known beach where there's these uh, Icelandic surfers that go out. Oh, that's cool. It's a teleconverter. Yeah. You need to bring that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's going to be so really cool. So that could be yeah. really interesting. Yeah. I think it's I think it's worth a go. I gotta and I gotta get to the racetrack and shoot some stuff. Now it's getting too hot, so maybe in the winter time. But well, anyway, they're setting up Formula One. Perfect. Yeah. So there's a lot. There's going to be a lot of opportunities for David and I to continue playing with this lens, and we're pretty excited about it, especially with the converter. It's not going to replace the 9280 for certain things, but it's definitely going don't, to be a don't nice lose part. That by the way. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Hyper specific, like a telecom. <laughs> that's, that. that's wow. Yeah. Yeah. Just and thought I, about it too, and I mean, for weddings, it's a cool lens too. Hmm. If you want to, you know, be really far away and not get in the way of sure, if you're photographing like down the aisle or yeah yeah, yeah, so, yeah that's very true there'll be a lot a lot of a lot of uses for it so. yeah yeah i think or, this lens or is... massive compression for doing um like uh engagement photos yeah where yeah. you you know you're putting a couple like right in front of downtown miami even though they're you know, a mile away yeah, so i think that would be pretty cool do you want to throw it on the camera and, and see yeah let me look i see a couple of random comments i want to address 
Uh, I noticed one of us has 6400 ISO. Yes, I was shooting with the SL2S. Mm -hmm. I use the SL2S when I go out early because I want to be able to not worry about shutter speed at all, which basically means I have to not worry about ISO, which basically means I bring the <laughs> SL2S because I'll use auto ISO and put the threshold at 25,000. Yeah. It's not, so clean. I'm just, it's so cl I'm well, just shooting. I'm not thinking about you it. You saw the results. Yeah. I, like... Yeah. So, so yeah. clean. Insanely yeah. clean. Uh, no loss of color saturation. Yeah. We talked about that on our SL2S episode, that that yeah. thing's a and then, low light uh, machine. Someone said, what lens, Josh? I don't know what you're... Well, 100 or 400, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. That we're talking about. Uh, what see. else? Oh, Ted says, looking forward to seeing you in Iceland. I'm looking forward to seeing you. There. I think that's pretty much all of the autofocus. Yeah, I don't, some questions about autofocus performance. I need to do measure testing, which I haven't done yet. But again, my my experiential you can certainly try it out. Here. It's too dark. Well, that lesson with the supercons, it's just too dark for that. Let's see. Hey, Jose. Yes. I'm gonna. Ask, well, this is gonna be. What, what light are you talking about? Bro? There's a little light over there that yeah. I have. A little accent light. The little, the little itty bitty one. No, it's not there. No, it is there above that on the arm. It's on the arm. Very professional. Is that light on? I can't even see. The little one, right there. No, right here. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming front. It's okay. It's not Come on. Come on, Jose. It's okay. Oh, there he is. Hey, oh. You guys got a quick glimpse of Jose. Is it plugged in? When and where is New Jersey Like a Meeting? It is April 21st, 22nd, and 23rd, and uh, maybe the 20th, at their headquarters in TDEC. But I think if you oh. didn't sign up already, it is um, full. Let me guess. It doesn't work. It, it did work when we were setting up. Uh, Everything's broken. Thank you. <laughs> also, uh, we should also mention we have a couple spots left. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's definitely. Oh, oh, there we go. Yeah, that's fine. Some more light on the bear. What? It does. So it is broken. Maybe turn the brightness down a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the best. For or, or, or check. Josh. What a professional show we're running right now. The battery. The battery. It's plugged in though. You want me to take my iPhone flashlight and just hang it? Please so no. Okay. All right. Let's let's try this. Okay. Well, Jose, while you're setting that up, I will um, look in the comments here. When would you travel with the 9280 versus the 100 or 400? That is actually a good question. I just. I uh, have taken two trips so far recently with the 9280. If I was going to be mobile, meaning walking around for long distances, I'd bring the 100 or 400. If I was going to be more tripod based, car based, I'd bring the 9280. That's assuming I didn't need focal lengths longer than 280, which would of course necessitate the 100 or 400. Just so off, was, hey. the choice between the two is going to come down to a few different variables. Things, things we talked about, like, am I looking no, for no, Boca? I mean, leave, leave am up. I looking for the most reach? Am I looking for the least weight? Am I looking for the highest performance? If I'm doing landscape, Low light landscape, especially, I'll bring the 9280. It just depends, like we always say. I mean, I'm going to list out in my mind all those different things, and that's going to help me determine which lens to bring. But I can easily make a use case for both because I've been using both all day, and they each do something different. How are we doing here? Yeah, looking good. So the 100 support for multi shot, it does. As long as your lens is full frame, it will support the multi shot. Uh... No promises on our video light, but. This is uh Well you should focus first, like get it all It's fine. It's okay. focused. Are we gonna go to the camera then? Yeah. Here we go. Okay. Do it. Hey, there's our friend Oscar. And so what are we what are we working with right now, David? A glitchy light. Mm -hmm. All right. Is that why it's like constantly changing? <laughs> it is. It is. <laughs> it's like a like a little dance club in here. I love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. All right. So we're we're locking this down. You can... Yeah, it's like a dance club. Mm hmm It's fine. We can do it without. We can do it without. <laughs> uh, it's fine. Okay. We're just having a good time. We're just having a good time. The best. Okay. Uh, so this is at the 100, 400. Actually, let me move it. Yeah. Well, well you should show the progression. So show, start at 100 and just sort of zoom in to 400 so they can understand yeah. okay. what that reach looks like, what that right. 4X zoom looks like. And, and I'm going to defocus this. There you see the bear. Okay. So we're fully defocused. Mm-hmm. Let's snap back to... It's not going to snap. I, I just snapped it back. Ready? Okay. And activating focus. Wow, that light. It's almost pitch... You guys can't see this, but the bear is like in the dark. <laughs> the bear this is, is a dark. terrible demonstration. This is a great demonstration. <laughs> a terrible demonstration. Yeah, this is a, a one second exposure. Oh, I got to take my eyes off the table. That's one... Okay, that gives you an idea of how dark this, this thing is. One second. Yeah, let me, let me up the... Uh... Okay. Well, this is an SL2, so we're only going to go to 800. Okay. Okay. Very professional. Yeah, thanks. Okay. Uh, so that is 100. I'm going to take a shot. There we go. And we'll... Nope. We're going to zoom in. Here we go. Super Pro. 
and it probably needs to do self timer. So clearly, we've got a little bit of motion blur there. Yeah, this is not the right tripod. I was using like a five series. Uh, All right, I am so. going to do a. There we go. We're doing a two second self timer, focusing on the bear, and here we go. Hands off, elbows off the table, Josh. There we go, and let's and zoom in. That's pretty good. There we go. Do you have teams on here, David, or no? Mm. Adam sent me some photos in teams. Yeah. Put some photos in teams. Let's see. So that's not bad. Uh, so that's that's a one hundred millimeter. And you know, just like we were finding here uh, with Josh's examples, I don't see any kind of chromatic aberration on the silver uh, R8 ornament there. Uh, a lot of nice detail in the fur and some good detail in our in our crayons. Looks great. Now, let as we zoom in, so this is, where should we stop? 200, 300? Yeah, show them, yeah, but well, you, you, well, you can see the range. Uh, I'm just getting, I'm just seeing if I can get these photos. While you're yeah, the marked, the marked focal length on the lens is 100, 135, 200, and then we jump 300, 400. Interesting that Leica chose not to do 280 marking to, to match up to the other lens, but... Well, because they the only reason to have 280 is because that was the end. Yeah, but it's also a classic Leica focal. Is it? Well, I, don't know if I, I think so. That. Actually, let me get... I want to get the eyes of the bear plus the ornament. Hands off the table. Poor oh, hold on one second. I'm just grabbing these. We're focusing and we're shooting. What format are these in? There we go. Oh, and it's blown out because... Let's try that again. There we go. All right. And we're going to zoom in. So this is at 200 and we're at 6.3. 6. Here we go. But that, look, that is a very, very respectable in terms of, of real world sharpness. We're not looking at a test chart. We're looking at a three dimensional object because everyone shoots teddy bears. <laughs> but, but clearly there is no shortage of detail wide open. We can see all the, all the stitching and texture in the hat. Obviously, all the fur detail in the texture in the ribbon. I mean, the result is is really, really excellent. And again, no chromatic aberration that's showing anywhere on this reflective ornament. Not on the top part where you see the where the uh, camera connects to the hook. Nothing. So let's continue through the range as we get to uh, 300. I'm going to focus on the eye. Go and hands off the table. Okay. We have playback and let's take a look at that. And again, here we are looking at that ornament, no chromatic aberration whatsoever, which is interesting because it's not a marked Apo lens, right? This is not an Apo like the, the 90 to 280 or the Apo Summicron SLs, but for a non Apo lens to basically be completely absent of chromatic aberration, it's, it's pretty darn impressive, especially wide open. And that, look, you can see us in there, or, or at least <laughs> all of our lighting. So that is really, really sharp. That's at 300 millimeter. Oh, my God. And now we're going to go to 400. I'm going to have to do two separate shots. I'll do one of the bear's eyes, and then we'll do one, whoop, and then we'll do one of the ornament. So kind of have apples to apples. So here we go. Let's lock our focus. We're going for the eyeball again. There we are, and hands off. And we flashed, <laughs> hold on, hold on. Glitchy light, there we go. And here we are at 400 millimeter. Look at that detail, Josh. That is, that is, again, real world versus test charts. There is no shortage of of sharpness, of contrast, of detail. And if I can get there, look at, you can see the individual threads in that yellow ribbon. That is, that is impressive. Yeah, it's getting the job done. It's more than getting the job done. Yeah. This is, and, and if you've seen the show before, you know the bear and you've seen us shoot this with tons and tons of lenses. This is uh, one of the best results that, that I've seen. I got, I'm gonna interrupt your shooting yeah. for a moment. 
Um, in real time, Adam sent me a couple of test shots he did with the okay. teleconverter. So okay. we actually can sh we can go back to the computer. Hold on a second. Size it. First. Um, I will show. Thank you, Adam. These are great. Uh, hold on. Oh, birds. Yeah. Well, he right did outside some... the store actually. What? That's right outside the store. Was oh, it really? Yeah. That's pretty cool. All okay. right. This looks no bigger. Bigger. This looks like stock photos. <laughs> There we go. I mean, he was standing right outside the store, and then obviously the birds were you know, All right, let's further away. But... Nice. <laughs> so this is Adam's uh, photo. So I, I'm going to read the, the metrics on this real quick. So the first one here is, this is at 560. So we're full on with the teleconverter all the way at 400. Mm -hmm. A thousand of a second, F9, ISO 1600. Wow. That looks insane. Looks great. Wow. Nice work, Adam. Wow. And then the second one is that one. This one. Wow. Yeah, I should just look at the info here. Yeah. Um, there you go. ISO, I never ISO 5000 on the SL2S, 560 at F9. Wow. I mean, look at the detail you're getting in the fact. This is ISO wow. 5000. Handheld, obviously. Wow. Thousand of a second on the SL2S. Make your window just a tad smaller so they, it doesn't cut the uh, text specs off. People can look at the text specs. There you go. Yeah, this is. Wow. Thank, thank you for sending these, Adam. These, these are fantastic. fantastic. Yeah, this is awesome. So there's teleconverter performance for you right there. My goodness. Um, ISO five thousand, and then just go back to the other one with the tech data still up. Wow. Here we're at ISO sixteen hundred. Hmm. I mean, there's no noise. It's just perfect. Smooth. Dang. Crisp. Sick. Nice job, Adam. Well, there wow. you go. So Adam's stepping in with some really nice teleconverter shots. In real um, time. In real time, in the chat. Thank you very we much. Would say it takes a village, right? That's right. So yeah. good job, Adam, on those shots, because those were great. So there you go. There's teleconverter performance. Um, that is awesome. Nice job. Uh, I don't know nice if there's anything job. else. I know we were talking about doing a slightly less than two hour long show this time. So maybe we actually will succeed <laughs> at doing that. If there's any um, burning questions about the lens that we haven't answered or said we are going I think to answer we, later. I think we do at least have to mention we have like a, a couple spots in upcoming workshops. What do we got? Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. I feel like we've got. Do you have anything? Bhutan. Uh, Bhutan. Two spots left. June 15th to the 21st, 2023. Because mm. you can go to the computer. There you go. Two spots left to go to Bhutan. I want to go. You should go. <laughs> so I wish. Uh, looks sick. Okay, so there's that. It appears to be the only you know, workshop. That would be a great place to use a 100 to 400. That would be a great place to use a 100 to 400. What a fantastic <laughs> tie in to this video. <laughs> so I actually thought we had some Greenland spots left. No, we sold, we did, but we sold out. Uh... Yeah, sometime. Okay. I guess this is our, our next store event, April 28th, like a lounge. Go. Perfect. So if you're in the area and you want to come and hang out with us and get some free uh, free beer, <laughs> we're having a like a lounge of book signing with Lisette Morales. Uh, oh, nice. The work is awesome. We just got the book in. So oh, Lisette Morales McCabe, sorry. I missed the last part there. Um, anyway, this is uh, Lorena put this on, so props to her. Good job. Um, Good yeah, job. so if you're around April 28th, come and hang out with us. Um... Go back to us, Jose. I have so many lenses in front of me. I think we actually knocked out a show in less than two hours, which I'm very possible? impressed by. Unless there's anything we missed, but I really feel good about the breadth that we covered, Jose. Yeah, it's also good to mention um, how the SL2S <clears throat> comes in with a lens like this, where obviously you're way stopped down, especially if you're using the teleconverter. That you know you can shoot up your ISO to 6400, 5000, and you know that's and you don't need to crop. I mean, if you're using the teleconverter at 400. You know, maybe you don't have to crop that much. So I mean, you're keeping your 24 megapixels, getting excellent low light, you know, high ISO performance. Yeah. You can kick up your shutter speed. So yeah, that's a great true. lens for 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 the a great camera for this lens. Yeah. What were you gonna sure. say, David? Uh, you had made a point. We were talking about this that the 2470 would pair really well with the 100 400. Oh, for sure. I mean, this is. As I mentioned a bit earlier, kind of the experience that I've had testing these these new lenses. So the 24 to 70, the 35 and 50 Summicron SL non apos and the 100 to 400, where they all have a very similar feel in the way they render and the way that the focus kind of falls off from the center outward. Very much like end lenses at our lenses, like what we're used to, but not used to for SL lenses. So it's a nice pairing. I think the 24 to 70 and the 100 to 400 will work great well together. They're both lighter than their longer or Bigger zoom counterparts, 82 millimeter filter still. Um, weather sealed. Weather sealed, obviously. thank you. 
Yeah, I think that would be a nice two zoom lens kit to cover from 24 all the way to 400, in theory, all the way to 560 with the teleconverter mm -hmm. while maintaining a pretty fast aperture, especially with an SL2S. So yeah, if you've got, maybe you've got one of those SL2Ss with one of the new uh, prime lenses or just a body by itself and you're looking for some relatively affordable yep. zooms that are light that you can just toss in the bag, I think they would pair really well. Yeah, I think I don't so want to knock the 24 to 70 either. I mean, I love that lens. We have a show on that lens. Mm -hmm. I've continued to use it. And as much as the 24 to 90 is a powerhouse, there's a convenience to the size and weight of the 24 to 70, especially for travel, when I don't need max performance, I just want flexibility. Sure. That that lens really, really shines well for that. And the reality is when you stop this down, it's not far off where the 24 to 90 is. It's not, it's right. not. The 24 to 90 is the king of all. It zoos, is. But this is. is this is excellent and it is very M lens-like, which I mm -hmm. enjoy. Or our lens like, or our lens, whatever. Take true. your pick. Don't worry. We'll eventually do an our lens episode, but you know, this is the closest we've come. Okay, first of all, I had to buy the one hundred five to two eighty to have for this show. Okay, <laughs> I had to buy one. That's how hard these things are to find. And that's really the last point I'll make, which is, every show we do lenses, we do comparisons. People will throw out all the possible obscurities to, to test against, which we love. It's what I do all day, but as a but, there is an extremely important factor, which is. <laughs> Availability and practicality. <laughs> if I have to buy a lens from outside the United States just to show one on our show, it's probably not a super viable, convenient <laughs> option as an alternative to a lens you could literally just go online and get from anywhere. So sure. those are things to keep in mind as you're on your hunt for different focal lengths, especially when you're looking for practical stuff. I'm not talking about like obscure M lenses. I'm talking about right. just like a good everyday, you know, short, medium, and long telly. I am surprised that no one in the chat said, oh, but what about like a 400, 5, 6 on a, on a Visiflex 3 and whatever? Yeah, well, that's, yeah. we're getting real obscure now, but um, I think we should call it. Sign us off. Mm. Any any last questions that we've missed, done. Jose? Everybody's ready for us. I'm checking. Or they like, uh, see ya. They're, they're, they're done. They, they're checked out. Wow. Okay. <laughs> well, we were very efficient. I'm very happy, actually. I'm surprised. I'm surprised. I'm surprised. We would we not so dismiss the 24 to 70. Luba mirror. That lens is awesome. We have a whole two hour show on it. We I do. adore that lens. We do. We do. Watch it. Jose? Mm -hmm. All good? Looks like that's it. Sign us off, David. Wow. Okay. Well, uh, 100, 400. You saw it here. Uh, be sure to, we will have this video uh, archived along with all the rest of our great videos. We've done, wait, have we done 60 yet? I think this may be our. If this isn't our 60th, it's very close. It's very close for our 60th. Yeah. We are not good at counting, <laughs> so we don't know. But it, it's been about 60 episodes, mm -hmm. and our entire back catalog of every episode, uh, including the 24 to 70, including SL lenses, including everything except our lenses, mm -hmm. is in the back catalog, and it's all sorted by playlist, so you can go through, and it's all in glorious full 4K. Uh, many of which have timestamps with more to come. Yes. Uh, thanks, Jose. I did actually get that last episode that you sent me. Good. Okay. Uh, working on it, working on it. Our, I'm not exactly sure when our next episode is. I will be leaving... Sometime in May. Sometime in May, yeah. I'm leaving uh, for two weeks this coming week, so it's going to be at least three weeks till I come back, and then... Yeah, yeah. I'll be in New Jersey for Leica yeah. end of April, and then I'm on vacation in May. It's going to be a, a strange couple of months, but we're still around. We're working on it. Don't miss we're us too much. It. It's going to be okay. Don't miss us. It's going to be okay. Uh, until then, check out all of our... Uh, past videos, except for the really early ones, because those are embarrassing and cringeworthy. Uh, we pretend <laughs> we had to start somewhere. Okay? I know, but I wish we could just start at the finish. No, yeah. Uh, be sure to check out red.forum.com for the latest like a news, uh, in depth re reviews, like the 90 to 280, for instance, um, up to date firmware, etc. Uh, all on red.forum.com because we're not just on YouTube. Be sure, if you're not subscribed to this channel, please do so and click the notification bell so you know when we post new content, probably before we do, mm -hmm. because we're not good with dates either. <laughs> Counting dates, it's, listen. It's beyond, it's beyond our skill. Our brain is too full with this stuff. We're doing our best. Like, to adult, so we can't really do that. Um, big thanks to Jose. Big thanks to Josh. Hey, thanks to Adam for uh, throwing Seriously. those great bird good photos, work. right? Yeah. That was great, because... Uh, I'm not patient enough for that. <laughs> and uh, big thanks to you for tuning in on your Saturday night. Uh, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments. And uh, until the next episode, we'll see you then. Have a good night, guys. Good night, everyone. Good night, guys.